Oh, I'm doing it wrong. Okay. Hey, Argyle. Get out of that face. Yesterday. Yesterday I was off on a little bit of a tangent. And I figured I would bring you back. And maybe you will get a towel done today. I started working on it already. It's been a long day. Um, this is Argyle Mulesby. You see a lot of her. She's kind of connected to my hip most of the time. She's my nurse kitty. Hopefully this video is not too bad. This camera is like Google's way old and my family is very loud so you may hear them in the background. But started this off as this is my yarn. We'll start off with the basics. This is the band that comes on the cones. And it'll tell you in little teeny tiny print that I had to get bifocals for that this colorway is called freshly pressed which is kind of neat it's a white with little splotches of green and blue and maroon and the maroon kind of runs out to a pink and the green kind of runs out to a lighter green but any standard American yarn Pardon me, my nose is itchy. Any standard American yarn is going to have this set of symbols on the back. First symbol, that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that looks like a little skein of yarn and it says four. That's the weight of the yarn. Four is a worsted weight. Four is your general yarn yarn. Your let's go to Walmart and get yarn. Your let's go to the craft store and get yarn. Four is your standard. Pretty much. For almost everything. Even cottons are starting to come in a four now. Although a lot of things are going bulkier yarn. Which I haven't delved into too much of that. I got a... I got a Karen Cakes anniversary skein and I had no clue how big it was when I ordered it. Holy crap, it's bigger than my head. But this will tell you on the back. This one's 100% cotton because kitchen cotton. But you always have to read because just because it's kitchen cotton doesn't mean it's actually kitchen cotton. And it recommends, since I'm crocheting, says five millimeter US H8. I don't pay attention to the knit information because I don't knit. And you always want to make sure that you can wash and dry it. Thank you Argyle for making the whole bed shake. It's not all cotton says that you can put it in the dryer. Most of the kitchen cotton I've come across says you can put it in the dryer. And I just put it in with my towels. I wash cold, I dry warm, and everything seems to come out okay. But this towel, I started with a 40 chain and then chain one. And you just go along, you have your one loop on the hook from your working yarn, you yarn over. And you put it through. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but you see how each stitch looks like a little V? Those are often called front posts and back posts. Uh, when I am doing stitches the right way, when I'm doing half doubles, you yarn over, you put it through both posts. Yarn through, three loops on the hook, 
pull it through, and that is your half total crochet. And towels, kitchen things are a good project when I cannot math. I have several medical conditions that add to my fact that I cannot math plus my medication. So I try not to math when I don't want to math. When I'm having a good day and I can math then I can make you know things that are that are shaped and I can make amigurumi things, although everybody seems to make amigurumi and I really don't like chenille yarn so I had to kind of go old school and find functional pieces that I would want that I don't see a whole lot of people making and amigurumi is fun every now and then, but it'll make you crazy because counting. There is a lot of math involved in amigurumi. Excuse me, let me put this up on my yarn spindle. Now I don't have to keep worrying about the cat trying to attack my yarn. I'm going to try to figure this whole thing out and maybe we will get some kind of title thing going. Maybe we'll get, I had music going in the background and the other two from my husband's band and we're allowed to use that because copyrights and stuff but I figured maybe some of you didn't want to hear his music, so I don't have music on this one. Is that better? Should I put the music back? Should I not put the music back? I am just mindlessly, mindfully doing half double stitches. Just all the way along, still going on the same row. Yarn over through both posts, which is easy with a half double because it makes these little, little, you can see them better over here. They make the little holes. See your little holes? So that makes it easy with the half doubles. And when I'm medicated, I still have to pay attention and make sure that I'm doing my half doubles the right way. But kitchen cotton is very forgiving. You can mess up and pull it apart and do it again. It's just yarn over underneath both top and bottom or front and back posts. Pull your yarn through. While you're pulling your, your hook through, you tend to not think about it if you already know. But if you don't know, if you turn your hook a quarter turn just so your hook is down, it'll latch on to that one piece of yarn that's on the hook and will help guide you through without use, losing that loop while you're in the middle of the stitch. And kitchen towels are one of those things that if I'm sending them out, I try to make sure that they have mostly straight edges. You should be able to do perfectly straight edges but I have no fear in telling people that I make things when I'm medicated and I do not do perfection. I do functional fiber art. 
I do not make perfect pieces. None of my pieces have ever, I don't think, been perfect. Something's always got a stitch missing. Let me undo this and show you this last stitch of the row. When you're at the back of your row and you have your last stitch, it's just like the other ones, you yarn over and then you take your hook and put it between that little space under the top, the front and back loop. Grab your yarn, pull it through, three loops on the hook, grab your yarn, pull it all the way through. Now that is the last half double for your row. So you just make one loop, turn your work, and my next half double yarn over is going to go in this first stitch that is not on the hook. Anything on the hook is not considered a stitch. I don't know why, just because it isn't. So you never count the loop on your hook as a stitch. It's not a stitch until it's off of the hook. But you just kind of keep doing half doubles along until you think your towel is tall enough. Now this is your towel. Unless it's somebody else's towel. But then you're making it, so it's still kind of your towel. I feel like I should sit back here and talk, but then I feel like I should lean up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm not shrimping. That's a bad thing to do. But once you decide, we'll do one more row, and I'll show you how to turn a flat dish towel into a dish towel with a hanger. Now the only thing that I had a huge problem with while I was crocheting and trying to, I have a thing with green buttons. I don't know why. I have had a thing with green buttons since I got my first tattoo with green buttons and then every tattoo on that sleeve had to have at least one green button. And so, of course, when I'm crocheting things that need buttons, I'm going to have to have green buttons. But you have to make sure if you're crocheting, if you're going to be making hanging towels, if you're going to be making towel holders, if you're going to be making garments, it's always nice to see if your yarn needle will fit through your buttonholes. Because I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten really pretty buttons to use. And you go to sew them on with that little scrap of yarn. And uh -oh. And I don't know about you. I mean, you could take some thread and a regular needle and you could sew a button on. But that kind of made a whole point thing for me and I had to find green buttons that had the right size diameter. So before you go to buy buttons, Find one that will fit your yarn hook or your yarn needle and that way you don't have to worry about using a sharp sewing needle or losing a sharp sewing needle which I seem to have a problem with sometimes. You also don't want to start in on this journey and say okay I'm going to go on eBay and I'm just going to buy a big lot of yarn and see what I like. Because you know what you're going to get? Nine out of ten times. You are going to get 70s nostalgia yarn. And 
I'm sure anybody my age knows what I mean by that. But even Value Yarn, even Red Heart has gotten much softer over the last few decades. And you don't want to buy a yarn because somebody else likes it or because, you know, it's cheaper than this one or it's more expensive than this one. Yarn is really one of those things that you kind of have to feel your way around. It took me... <sighs> oh, it hurts to say. It took me a little bit over a year once I started re-crocheting to find yarn that I like and yarn brands that I like and not just, oh, look at this color, but, oh, look at this color. What can I make out of? Because that helps. If you have yarn that's pretty, I would love to have, you know, the yarn wall. Everybody, all the big famous people got the yarn walls going behind them. Or the gothy people call it their yarn dungeon. And you know what I got behind me? Weird shit and books. Because my yarn's all in bags because I'm trying to have it not take over the bedroom. So I don't have a sewing or craft room. Since I'm sick a lot, this is where I am most of the time. So we are finishing off our last double stitch. You want to make sure that you get both posts. Grab your yarn, pull it through. You still want to make one in turn. Now what you need to do to make your towel into a towel with a strap and a button is you need to make this top edge much smaller. We do this by doing decreases. Decreasing on half double stitches is the same as doing half double stitches. Yarn over. You go in the first under the two posts grab a piece of yarn this is how we're decreasing and go under this next set of posts grab a piece of yarn so now you're turning two stitches into one now you want to yarn over and then go under the third set of posts and grab a yarn under the fourth set of posts, grab a yarn. Now you're going to have the four from the posts and the one you just grabbed and you just pull that all through to the end and then yarn over and then get the next two. And depending on what you want your end product to look like, you can do a line in between of just half doubles or you can keep I think it's three lines if you start with a 40 base in one turn I think it takes three lines of decreases so you go through that stitch and pull you have four plus the one you just grabbed and you just pull all those through Yarn over, go into the first stitch and grab, go into the second stitch and grab, and then pull all of those through, and yarn over, and go in the first stitch and grab yarn, and go in the second stitch and grab yarn, yarn over, and pull all of those through. Now this is taking the 40 stitch width of your towel and you're taking each set of stitches and reducing them to a single stitch so the first go we go from 40 to 20 and we go from 20 to 10 
I like to try to end up with five or six on my hanging strap for the towel and the button because it's easier to place the buttonhole that way. Um, if you're doing double stitches instead of half doubles, you don't have to do a buttonhole because of the way the stitches line up. If you do half double stitches like I'm doing, then you can just make sure that you skip one. And I'll show you that once we get there. And that will leave enough space if you skip one in the center of your button tab. That will leave you enough space for most buttons. It depends on what button you're using. I get mine in bulk. I get mine in Amazon because I can get green buttons by the bag. And there's no reason for me to get other color buttons at this point because I use green buttons and that's what I use. So we're getting down to the end and we're still doing four on the hook, one on the one that you grabbed from the working yarn, and then we go in and grab a piece of yarn. We're still doing the same thing. You go in and grab a piece of yarn to make that decrease. So you have four loops plus your working yarn on your hook. And you pull that through. And then you do the last two, you yarn over, you go in one, and that last one you want to make sure that you have the V stitches. And that you're not accidentally turning the stitch on its side because you want to make sure that you have the structural V stitch at the end. Sometimes you gotta use the end here your crochet hook and get a little wiggly, but you pull that yarn through and then you pull that through and then you chain one and as you can see with our decreases as sharp as they are we have made a 90 degree turn sometimes that's good to keep in mind for other things but what we need to do is we need to get this down even more so we're going to do the same thing we're going to yarn over Go in the first and grab that yarn. Go in the second and grab that yarn. And then grab the working yarn and pull it through all four. And keep going on that line and doing your decreases on every one. And you can fold your, your towel this way. You can fold your towel that way. It's up to you, depending on what stitch you're using, depending on what yarn you're using. It's up to you really what the right side and the wrong side are. You want to make sure that you figure out what the right side and the wrong side are before you place your button because your button is going on your right side, not your wrong side or your back. It's going on the right side of your piece because that's the side that's going to show to the world. That's also the side you need the button on. <laughs> We've all I don't care how many years you've been crocheting, we've all put a button on the wrong side of something or put the next color started on the wrong side of something. I did 
half a plushie wrong side out. It just, stuff happens. And, you know, sometimes you have time to rework it. And sometimes you just figure that's the way that the art came out. Okay, now we have six more going into here. Still doing the decreases, grabbing yarn, pulling through all four loops, grabbing yarn, and grabbing yarn. And then, do you want to turn? And now, if you want to look, you should have if you can see the way the towel is folding in like that you should have one more row to go before your button strip so just keep doing the same thing yarn over Go under your first stitch, go under your second stitch, and pull that through, yarn over, under one, under two, half double crochet, that's not half double, that's half double, double crochet, I say half double, okay. Don't mind me, sometimes I talk to myself even though you're there. Sometimes you're not there. Sometimes I am just talking to myself. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it works. I guess that's my bit. And we got two more to go. And that should leave us. If my math is working tonight, that should leave us with a nice strip of five half double crochet to make the button tab from. My yarn has decided to get fiddly with me. Okay. So make your one loop and turn around and you've got one, two, three, four, five. Yes, indeed. You have five half doubles to work with. So just go in there like you're doing a normal row, even though it's a little arky right now. Because of the way those half doubles are, but you are making the button strap. So give it like two or three rows and you won't even notice that curve anymore. Now, I will tell you sometimes this comes out as five for me. Sometimes this comes out as six for me. Either way, I make it work with the half double crochets. If you have five, then you leave your buttonhole on the third. If you have six, then you leave a buttonhole on two and three. So it's right in the middle of your button strip. There's really no wrong way to crochet. It's you're doing your own thing. I mean, sometimes you're following a pattern and just because you're following a pattern doesn't mean you have to do exactly what the pattern says. Doesn't mean you have to use that yarn. Doesn't mean you have to make those colors. Doesn't mean, you know, it's still, even if you're following a pattern, you can still do your own stuff. You know, make it yours. If you don't find a pattern that you want to do, then just sit down with some yarn and just kind of freehand some stuff. Worst comes to worst, you can make some cat toys, you know? 
just for handsome stuff and get used to it. And stuff will come to you once you start figuring out increases and decreases and how they affect the rest of your project. Then you can work that in without doing actual proper math. Now see, we are one, two, three, see we're three along. And I think my button is going to go down here. So I think this is going to be different. But you do just, just like you're doing a really short row, you're doing a row of five. You put it under the Vs, you grab your string, you pull it through, you wrap one around, make sure you get the structural stitches at each end, pull it through, make a loop, turn your work, and this is just one of those, one of those things you can do while you're watching TV or watching a movie, you know, you're actually mindfully doing something with your hands. But you don't have to count your stitch markers. You don't have to put a stitch marker every time you have a new row. You don't have to worry about what number you're on. You, you just kind of go with it. Just let the crochet happen. I mean, worst comes to worst, you pull it out and do it again. It gives you more practice that way. See, and you just do with one loop. Turn your work, loop over under your top, your front and back posts of your V, pull through your three loops on your hook, yarn over, go under the front and back post of that V, grab your yarn, pull it through the three loops, see, so and you just keep going. And the only thing to take into consideration with the button tab, besides which side your button's going to be on, so you don't sew the button in the wrong place, is you want to make sure that your tab is long enough to fold over and button and still have like a stove handle or Two fingers or three fingers is generally the best rule for refrigerators and stove handles. I mean, if you're going to use it out in the garden, you can make it longer or shorter, depending on what you use it for. Some people keep one in their tent. Some people keep several in their grow tent because, I mean... There's really not a bad place to have a 100% cotton towel. There's really not. And once you are happy that your strap is long enough, See, this is about halfway there. It needs to fold down and button. So I am going to do a couple more rows before I put my buttonhole in. I don't know about you. I know a lot of people got into crocheting with the everybody was stuck in their house thing that was going on. I got to the point that I was organizing my bedroom closet and I have had the same blanket in a trash bag, three quarters done falling on my head 
every time I open the class door. So I said, you know, I really should finish this blanket. My mother-in-law tried to teach me decades ago and me being young and stubborn and impatient was like, okay, I don't understand how this works right away and I'm not good at it. So I'm not doing it anymore. But I really missed out. I missed out on a good teacher. And I wish I would have done more of this when she was around. But yeah, this became my... Let me make functional things for people I love. And let me make functional pretty things for people I know and see if I want them. So, it's turning into a little, you know, I'll sell something here, I'll sell something there. I can't call it a business yet, I guess. But, I'm trying. Um, all the money that comes from my yarn either goes back into my yarn or goes to pay for medication that week because my insurance sucks. And big word alert, I have Ellers Danlos Hyper Mobile, and I have myalgic encephalomyelitis. Those are two of my conditions. That's besides, you know, the Franken gut thing. So, my meds are expensive. Um, my one med that keeps my food down is $1,500 a month. Um, my med, when I get a gut infection like I have now, I have a SIBO flare now. And my medication for that is $3,000 for a 30-day regimen of antibiotics. So, being sick expensive. And, I don't know. I don't have the charisma for crowdfunding. I, I, I just don't. I, I wish I did. I don't have the charisma for crowdfunding. I have the charisma for, I made this all by myself, will you buy it? Because I made this all by myself, will you buy it? Because, you know. I don't know. Maybe I just need to get older. Okay, I am making my buttonhole. Now, since I have five here, I'm going to do my first two stitches, just regular, and then chain one. Skip the third stitch in and go into the V's under the fourth stitch. Grab your yarn and then pull that through all three loops. Do your fifth stitch, which should be the final in your row. And then our next row is going to be weird because we need to reinforce that buttonhole. I made a one and I turned and I lost. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to make our first stitch. And mine doesn't want to cut out. It's one good thing about cotton. Every once in a while, you have that one little loop that decides to come out, and it just kind of cooks it back in there. Okay, do your second stitch. Now your third, where that chain one is, 
we're going to go down inside that buttonhole and grab the yarn and then just pull it through the three loops and do the last two in that line and we are going to do one more just of straight see now that you did that one inside the buttonhole now that gives you a solid V of posts to go under. So you do your first one. And your second one. And don't forget to grab your yarn. And then your third. Ta-da! You do your last stitch. Make sure that you get the proper stitch V's over your hook. Grab your yarn. Now it decides it's my last stitch. Now it's going to be futzy at me. Okay, come up through, make one, chain two, pull this through, grab your scissors, 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 cut, pull, I'll take your two, your thumbnail and your first finger now and put them against the knot right here and pull down, tighten that knot down so it's like that and you just got to sew your tailing, you sew your button here, Ta -da! kitchen tail. And kitchen too. I hope you have fun. I'm trying to figure out this 